Okay. <sighs> Welcome back, my lovelies. My name is uh, Whisper219. Uh, getting back into the the swing of things with uh, uh, Cyberpunk and Shadowrun Dragonfall and all that kind of stuff. Um, been cleaning and reorganizing and just doing a whole bunch of shit around the house and stuff, so it's just been... It's been difficult to find motivation. But I'm just gonna continue. Uh, yes. Right. Last time we found out that uh, Green Winters was killed by whatever uh, Monica was killed by, so... Now, we need cash. So, in jobs directory, be pending. Humanus data steal. Samuel Beckenbauer has approached me with an offer of work. Apparently, an associate of his has learned of some disturbing details regarding the Berlin chapter of the Humanis Police Club. Uh, Politic Club. Politic Club? Whatever. He would, like you to con he would like to contract your team and to investigate these rumors. Beckenbauer was unwilling to uh, discuss the specifics of the job in your absence. He has requested that you speak with him in person at your earliest convenience. Alright, I can do that. I like Samuel. He's a nice guy. Hello again, mein Freund. What can I do for you? Heard you wanted to talk to uh, to talk about a job. Yes, yes I do. Thank you for coming so promptly. Takes a deep breath, slowly releases it, and looks you in the eye. Tell me, what do you know about the Humanist Poly Club? Uh, they're an anti-meta-human hate group. I would presume I'd probably know stuff about this. The largest and most well-funded of its kind, instigators of the Night of Rage, and the enemy of everything that I stand for. Sorry. Night of Rage? A worldwide race riot that took place in February of 2039. Thousands of innocent metahumans were attacked, beaten, and killed. Women and children were corralled into warehouses for protection, and then burned alive when the structures were put to the torch. Yeesh. This is what humanity stands for. This is the agenda that its leaders strive to advance. They will not be satisfied until all metahumans everywhere are driven from the face of the earth. Disgusting, and this job of yours has something to do with humanus? Yesterday I overheard one of my assistants talking on his comm. He was yelling, clearly agitated. I questioned him and he confided in me. And what he told me made my blood run cold. Let me guess where this is going. Humanus is planning something. An attack of some kind. Yes, I believe so. The Berlin chapter of Humanus has arranged to acquire a large shipment of extremely hazardous chemical. Their leader, Volker Stahl, is a vicious ideologue. It goes without saying that whatever he intends to do, it won't be good for us. I want you to infiltrate the smuggling operation that is delivering the shipment. Once you arrive at the Humanus compound, you will find out what they're planning to do with the chemical and put a stop to it. Wouldn't it be easier to just hijack the shipment? Why allow it to get to the Humanus compound at all? No, stopping the shipment would not stop Humanus. They would merely acquire another. A pack of snarling racists, they are extremely well funded. That's not compensation. What does this gig pay? <sighs> I 
22,000 new yen as a, payment, as a payment. I'll do it. Count me in. We'll make the arrangements for your meeting with these smugglers. Their leader is an elf who calls himself Maxim. Take the Yuban to Schottennest, and you will find him waiting there. Best of luck to you. It was very good hunting. Know that you're doing a great thing for the metahumans of Berlin. Your efforts will not go unrecognized. All right. Well. Things are heating up. Any of it? Nope. One figure stands in the U-Bahn station, Dietrich. He raises a bottle at your approach, then tosses it away. Figured I'd run into you here, boss. Wanna be sure that I uh, caught you before you headed off. <sighs> Whisper, we have to talk about this Humanus gig. Go ahead, Dietrich. I'm listening. Well, I've got a history with Humanus. I fought him back in 39, during the Night of Rage. Hell of a thing that was. I remember the terror, the senseless violence. The murdered children. I remember this little dwarf boy. I stuffed his body in the gutter, to Whisper. I can still see his face, all bruised and, and broken. To this day, it still makes my blood boil. Anyway, long story short, we beat him. Berlin's punks and anarchists all came in together and stomped the living dreck out of those racist pigs. A lot of good people died that night. We put down some of the bad ones, too. Let me guess, you want to come on the humanist run so you can finish the job? That's part of it, sure, but not the whole story. I don't just want to come on this run, boss. I have to come. It's my nephew, Alexander. He signed on with Humanus, driven to it by a worthless sack of a dad, no doubt. I take it that his father, your brother, is a Humanus member too? Nah, that'd take a level of conviction to quality that he thoroughly lacks. My guess is he's been treating Humanus as a boarding school. They feed and house their recruits, and that's money that he dresses or spend on himself. So he dumped the, uh, his boy off on them. Never mind the fact that they're fascist swine. I've got to get Alexander out of there, Whisper, before it's too late. Those monsters are experts in warping young minds. It's how their disgusting ideology propagates. So I'm asking you, as a personal fighter, to let me come along on the run. I have to get into that compound, Whisper. I have to find Alexander. I have to turn him bef uh, around before those animals make him do something unforgivable. Of course, Dietrich. I wouldn't keep you from something like this. Thanks, boss. Never thought he'd bring me, of course. Took it a woman for that. But it's good to hear it all the same. Counting on you, boss. Yep. Assemble the team and travel to the Shotten Nest uh, to uh, infiltrate the Humanus Poly Club compound. and Dietrich. I do that because... Yeah. If we're infiltrating some sort of racist compound, we don't want to be racially diverse. <laughs> Just cause problems for infiltration. <laughs> oh, I hate saying that. The U-Bahn uh, rattles to a halt at the edge of Kreuzberg. We're only a few blocks away from Schottennest, the gaze that Maxim and his smugglers call home. According to Samuel, they should be expecting you. Alright. Weapons. Confirm. 
trick. Look, boss, I just wanted to thank you for bringing me along on this one. It means a lot. Don't sweat it. Even Shadowrunners have families. Alexander, he's a... He's a good kid, you know. If I'd been there for him, if I hadn't, if I hadn't run off to Berlin and left him with his worthless sack of dad, he'd never have fallen in with those human ass pigs in the first place. His face softens and he claps you on the shoulder. Let's go find my nephew. Let's crack all the human ass skulls we can find along the way. Those fuckers have it coming in more ways than I can count. Yeah, no, I feel it. Shock Robin right here. Blue Carpenter. The matronly woman with round face and kind eyes greets you. Her apron is caked with what looks like about a year's worth of grease. Guten Tag, what can I get you? That depends, what do you have? Well, today I have a soya based currywurst for 5 million or a stupid sandwich combo for 10. Good and simple, stick to your, good simple stick to your ribs food. Perfect for a cold day like this. I'll take the soup and sandwich combo. That'll be ten million, please. She hand over a small cup of steaming soup and a sandwich. Take a quick bite and swig down some of the soup. It's wonderful. Hmm, delicious, thank you. She favors you with a motherly smile. Sure thing, honey. We don't see many strangers down at the end, uh, at this end of the line. In case you hadn't noticed, things are a little run down here. You weren't thinking of heading out past the wall, were you? As a matter of fact, I was. That doesn't make any difference to me, but you'll be careful out there. People on the other side of that wall will... They've got no respect for anybody. Thanks for the warning. She nods. Best of luck, and take care of yourself. All right, Shuckle and Writer, what do you have to say? Searching the dead rock, we find a package with the telltale markings of the Shuckle and Writer. Three, Humanus. This is an open request for information on current and past donors to the Humanus Poly Club. Identifying information such as home addresses and photographs is preferred. The presence of this hate group and its supporters will no longer be tolerated within our community. We will expose them to the harsh light of truth. Your timely delivery of this information will be well rewarded. Freedom, equality, information. Shock well and writer. Believe you me, I'm gonna be searching high and low for that. Rough-looking dwarf with fire plug <laughs> build holds out his hand at your approach. Whoa there, Beanpool. I don't know where you think you're headed, but you should turn around and go back the way you came. I got business on the other side of your barricade. One way or another, that's where I'm going. Stares at you. Uh, you look like you can handle yourself, but still, I'm telling you, the people out there are bad news. The gangs on the other side of this barricade would skin you as live as soon as look at you. Well then, I'll just have to skin them first. Alright, be my guest. Go play with the torture gangs. Something tells me you'd be a better fit out there anyway. Madam Vice, Sergei. Nice mask. Hmm. Shot and missed. So... That's where my objective is. But what's up this way? Oh. A barricade I can't get past. Never mind. It's only the illusion of freedom. Maxim. The figure at the center of the group shoots you an insolent gaze. His fine elvish features match Samuel's description. This must be Maxim, your smuggler liaison. Well, well, it isn't the muscle that Tuck promised us. Look who it is, everybody. The new hires have elected to brace us with their presence. Nice of you to join us. Glances at the PDA on his wrist, then looks back up at you. When he speaks again, his voice is sharp and humorless. The light chummer. Yeah, sorry about that. I got held up at the wall. <laughs> Well, you come highly recommended, so I suppose you all overlook it. It's 
have already pointed out, we're running late. Shouldn't we get moving? Yes, of course. Right you are. Slaps the side, uh, side of the bulldog's step van. Second van of the same design rumbles to life a few feet away. Highland people, and be ready. There's rough country between us and the meeting site. We might run into trouble along the way. Twenty minutes into your trip, the van comes to a screeching halt. Maxim presses his face to the passenger window. From the mix of anger and dread on his face, you can tell that he doesn't like what he sees. Damn it, I knew this was gonna happen. I fucking knew it. He cranes his neck around to look you in the eye. When you pile out of the van, you hear a whisper. We're gonna need all the uh, we're gonna need some muscle in a second. As you take your position outside the van, you hear a shrill voice bark out an order. A pair of portable gun turrets begin to self-calibrate in response. Sweeping your gaze over the gangers assembled before you, you identify the owner of the voice. A leathery woman with wild hair and a mirthless smile. She calls out again, her voice brimming with pride. Hello out there! Welcome to Rembok territory! Maxim licks his lips, his eyes scanning over the gangers, hastily assembled roadblock. This Kiez belongs to Surf Turf Slag, has for months. You'd better clear out on, in, out of our way before they show you up and force you out. Surf Turf? Those tunnel rats? They're ancient history. Go ahead and call them if you don't believe me. <laughs> Scream as loud as you want, they won't hear you. We buried them last week. Maxim's expression turns stony, but his voice remains calm. Congratulations on your victory. You must have taken some losses in the fight, though. I'm betting you're not at 100%. Why don't you let us cross the bridge in peace? There's no need for any bloodshed today. You know what? You're absolutely right. We don't need to fight. You just pay us a small toll, and we'll be more than happy to let you cross our bridge. I'm thinking, say, 500 new yen per van. Otherwise, you'd better find another way to get where you're going, because this bridge is ours, and nobody crosses without paying a toll. Nobody. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this does need to get violent. Get ready to ventilate these assholes, Whisper. We've got a schedule to keep. You know what? I'm gonna give this... I'm gonna give this a shot. Hold on. The kids. Corporate shadow runner. Damn it, I don't have... Negotiate. Look, so let's be smart about this. Nobody wants a firefight today. Good, that's a really good idea, pal. See that? Your muscle's smarter than you are. You should put her in charge. Never mind. Did I not pick the gang etiquette? Just redoing all the things that I have done. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting thing.
Don't worry, we've got your back. Good. Take him down, boys! Open fire! Plenty of explosive barrels to shoot. How did you miss? He was three feet in front of you! Yeet. Hold on, where's my team? Did I break something? I'm thinking I broke something. So in an attempt to save Scum, it removed my team. So... <sighs> Wonderful. Wait, what? I am an idiot. 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 What? Confirm. Why do I not have my team? What the fuck? Restart. Yes. Restart level. Yeah, 
okay. Confirm. Okay. Okay. All right. Please. Don't worry, we've got your back. All right. Turrets are going to be the biggest problem. Slice.
drink? Oh, damn it. Um. Self. Wow. Their mage sucks. I cannot see what the f is going on. very hard to hit, so... Where are you going? What, what are you doing? back and forth. What the f Alright, Glory. Hand raiser time. And I still need six more, and I'm going to get. Uh, I still need three more, and I'm going to get the gang charisma, etiquette, whatever, because I'm tired of not having options.
Well, that was, uh, unpleasant. All part of the job, though, eh? Sad but true. Gotta admit, Whisper, this attack has made me nervous. We're running late, we're low on ammo, and there's no time to call for reinforcements. Whichever way you slice it, we won't be going into this meet at our best. We'll roll up on this meeting site, be ready. We may need the unlimited of surprise if negotiations go south. Agreed. That ambush was more than a little convenient. Couldn't have set it better myself. All interactable things on screen, just the van. All right, let's rock. The courtyard of the Humanus compound is strangely quiet. The only activity that you notice is the clatter of the mechanized gates as they rumble shut behind the vans. The bulldogs roll to a stop. You step out alongside Maxim and the rest of the smugglers. There are crates here. Lots of crates. All scattered in various stages of disorganization. It looks as though your delivery is just one of many that this branch of Humanus has received. The smugglers unload the cargo from their vans with practiced efficiency. The whole operation feels polished and professional, but you can tell that Maxim is nervous. You can see it in his eyes. The smugglers finish up unloading the last of the crates, then take up positions around the van. The minutes pass. Nobody comes to meet you. No welcoming party. This isn't a good sign. It's almost as if they didn't expect us to make it here. My thoughts exactly. This puts us in a bad spot, Whisper. I'm not sure what our next step is. We need some answers, and we need to get paid. I'm gonna go have a talk with them. What are you gonna do, knock on the front door? What makes you think they'll even answer? They've done a pretty good job of, of avoiding us so far. Leave that to me, friend. Dietrich jerks a thumb in the direction of the humanist compound. They'll have a hard time avoiding us when I'm in there, kicking down doors and lighting fires. His eyes wide. You've gotta be kidding me. That's a humanist compound, Pavel. You go in there and you aren't gonna come back out. I'm your muscle. Dealing with situations like this is part of the job description. You're serious, aren't you? You're really going in there. Well, be my guest. I won't get in your way when you make it back. If you make it back, we'll be out here waiting for you. Knock, knock, open up the door. Alright. There's a warning label plastered on the side of the container. Judging by the amount of small print on the label, whatever was being stored in here is extremely bad news. Take a closer look at the label. Warning! Highly dangerous chemical agent. Do not take internally. Avoid contact with skin, eyes, mouth, and clothing. Increases aggression and reduces impulse control when inhaled. Avoid breathing fumes or vapor. Important. Do not proceed unless material safety data sheet has been read and understood. Well now. Isn't that convenient? Isn't, the pl isn't this the plot of Zootopia? The Humanus compound smells like a locker room and doesn't look much better. Calling the building run down would be an understatement. The paint is peeling off the cheap duraplast walls, and the tiles on the floor are mired with decades worth of grime. It's an old, ugly place, perfectly suited to the old, ugly ideology being practiced here. The end of the compound. The information that Samuel Beckenbauer sent you to find here lies somewhere ahead. scatter like roaches in the light. Large one painted on this footlocker. Numeric keypad awaits your input. 
I can't even hope to BS this or anything. Um, what's in here? Damn it. Okay. Guessing they're probably all keypad locked. Oh no. That sucks. drone I could send it through the uh, vents. This is the kitchen. Hello, what's this? A handwritten note sitting on the table. Hey, Kappel, you come highly recommended. Anyone who did what you did to those elves will go far around here. You can hit the kitchen anytime, but otherwise stay close unless otherwise told. Your locker code is 2619, locker 3, Owen. Well, that's one. Still five more I need. Okay. This turret is powered down with the turret alone. I'm thinking I might be able to... Manus Polyclub logo fills the majority of the screen on its terminal. A welcome message written in a cartoonishly aggressive font appears below. Please log in to begin. Decker to hack the terminal. Operations account information downloaded. You gain access to a list of Humanus safe houses worth some new yen in the right hands. Hey! So that's pay data. Humanus Forever. List of uh, newest batch of humanist recruits scrolls onto the screen. Alexander Farber, Fre uh, Frederick Bauer, Shin Yamada, Gernot Schumacher, Egon Kappel, and Klein. Make sure that they get assigned to their bunks in alphabetical order this time, Syed. I keep losing track of who was who in the last batch. As always, I am changing the code for my office. The new code is PRIDE. Volker Stahl. Download a file containing the recruits and pneumatic key codes along with the door code to your PDA. Nice. What's here? Dr. Hackman Terminal. Download the list for a complete donor list. There's quite a few names on here, including a billionaire philanthropist and his children's trio show host. Yikes. First pamphlet. Stuff's gross. Items four one seven six four one seven six no
two six nineteen. I literally just have to try all of them until I find out who's is who's. Marker 3 is Capel. Okay. So. 3. Personal code is pride. Share this with no one. Owen. Okay, so... Capel is three. Then... Four is Farber. Card stick. <laughs> Taking from racists, so it doesn't matter. Alright. Is that done? Klein and Capel. No. Okay. Then it's Schumacher. Eleven oh six. Frederick, I am pleased with how well you are doing. To show my growing trust with you, I'm giving you a new assignment in addition to your training duties. Beginning tomorrow, I would like you to tidy the armory. The access code is Purity. See that you don't forget it. Tomorrow evening, I will expect to see a full inventory of the weapons in our arsenal by nightfall. With it, you will deliver me a requisition order for the weapon of your choosing. You pick, my boy, I leave it up to you. Congratulations, Frederick, this honor is well deserved. Wolkerstahl. Oh no. That's useful. So, I've already done Klein, Capel, and Schumacher. So it's just Farber, Bauer, and Yamada. Hey! It's empty. So it's just Farber or Bauer. No. Then it is. Nitro. Boy, it was storing drugs. That means the last one is 14... Oh, 09. Inside you find a note. Alexander, you have seemed less than enthusiastic in our education sessions. Please understand that we are not a shelter. We are a factory. A factory that refines the dross of society. People like you into strong, pure warriors for humanity. In the future, I see to it that you are on time and well rested. If you drop the ball again, we're going to have a little talk about your future in this organization. Volker Stahl. Dietrich snatches the note out of their hands. I knew it! I knew that Alex wouldn't buy into their bullshit. He's the note over again. He's loose moving with the syllables. Come on, boss. He's still in here somewhere. There's still time. Yep. But first, I loot the armory. Turtle 
alone. Weapon rack. Hey, another Ares Predator. Mossberg CMDT. Medical supplies. Send item to stash. Box of grenades. Top of the line flash grenade. Send this item to stash. Gallery frag grenade. Send item to stash. Phosphorus grenade. Alrighty. Now. Time to venture deeper. Enter a door code. Pride. Faint click. Open the door, get on the floor. Operation False Flag Planning Report. Hello. Stocky man in a military surplus jacket enters the room. He's flanked on either side by a pair of young women. Their faces are masked with white kerchiefs, and each of them carries an unholstered pistol. Lower your weapons, girls. We have a guest. Soldiers exchange glances, then lower their sidearms. They look at you, their stares full of hatred and bile. There, that's better. I have shown you hospitality, stranger, and now it's time for you to return the favor. So tell me, why are you here? I'm here with the smugglers. We've brought you shipment, and we're waiting to be paid. Oh, don't worry. Your friends are already being taken care of. Trust me, they'll get everything that's coming to them. Is that supposed to be scary? Because I'm not impressed. By this time tomorrow, you'll be plenty impressed. I guarantee it. I don't even want to give this guy the benefit of a funny voice. There's been a lot of cargo moving through here. Planning something big, Volker? It's going to be glorious. That gas you've hauled in the uh, Uh So Yeah, this This is basically the plot of Zootopia. <laughs> I'm gonna put a bullet in this guy already. You're going to drive a bunch of metahumans crazy in order to prove that metahumans are crazy? Your pathetic stall. I've heard just about enough insolence from you. Alexander! Uncle Dietrich? Shoot him, Alexander. This man is an intruder and a traitor. Come here to do us harm. If you're gonna put it in shell in someone, put it in Stahl. He's a monster, Alex. I know you could see that. Humanist gunmen flanking Stahl exchange uncertain glances. One begins to raise her pistol, but hurriedly lowers it when the humanist leader steps forward. You swore an oath to us, Alexander. You will be a man and keep it. I... Listen to Dietrich, Alexander. He's a good man. Is he? Where the hell was he when my dad used to beat the shit out of me? Where was he when I got tossed out on the street? I do know, Alex. By the time I found out, the damage has already been done. Alexander, you will listen to me and obey your oath. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't want him to die.
can't see through Humanus's bullshit, you don't deserve to live. Fuck off, Whisper. They know how to prey on kids like Alex. It's not his fault. These animals don't respect you, Alex. They deny your choice. The uncle over there thinks you're a child. Now do the right thing and put an end to this. I'm telling you, Alex, he's using you. This is what groups like Humanus do. When he's finished with you, he'll toss you out, just like your dad did. No, no, he won't. I've seen lots of Humanus guys who've been here for years. If you really give a damn, you'd have been there when you, for me when I needed you. No, Alex, don't do this. Oh, boy. I took the wrong choice. I want to get the good ending. <laughs> I want the good ending. Okay. Yes, I looked it up. I...
All right, let's do this again. code. Right. I'm gonna say fuck this guy. Last flag planning report. Let's get on with it. The smugglers. Is that supposed to be scary? Can I have something big? Pathetic stall. Alexander or Dietrich? Listen to Dietrich Alexander, he's a good man. You, Alex, but you have to make a choice. Wait for Alexander to act. Do what you have to, Alex. It's your choice. Do it, you stupid boy. Do it. With his rifle and all, hell breaks loose. about a little bit of zap zap. And you stall. Goodbye stall. Slice you. And slash. And Alexander, you take the final shot.
nice. Unfortunately, I don't have good enough programs. Stitch me up. Alright, let's give this another try. Decker than I am. Just need to get in there and just deactivate the turret controls. Good, I thought that was going to go on longer. Black ice. I'm just disconnecting. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have to fight my way out of this. Um, there's a turret in the next room. Yeah, the difference between white ice and black ice is white ice only uh, causes you to uh, disconnect. Um, black ice deals uh, actual damage to uh, your character bi uh, via biofeedback. So. This little spot here is a ley line. Casters on there get uh, extra, get like all of their stats boosted.
lot of goons. I feel like this is time for grenades. Two of the same ability. stupid damage, but... that way. Sorry if I'm not talking too, uh, too much, I'm just <sighs> trying to make good tactical decisions, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately I'm not sure I am.
Hello. Asshole, just <laughs> Alexander just needs some rehab from Humanus bullshit. for me if you can. Who gave you permission to move? Ah oh, shit. More than likely, she's going to bleed out next round, so... you could hit with the shotgun from that range. This isn't Call of Duty where you can snipe with a shotgun.
eat. to do that, having to use the trauma kits. It's that whole thing of, uh, you know, in, in, in a video game where it's like, here's a rare resource that you should be careful not to use too much, and it's like, alright, never use them. Got it. Lightning at ya. Never mind. I'm gonna eat a different ball of lightning at you. And now just take Alexander up here and just Ladaw. Come on. I don't remember who any of these people are. So. Mada is the last one. Two, one, one. Four. It's empty. Next one from there, alphabetically, is Schumacher. So that's one out of six. Out. Memory door code. Harbor fourteen oh nine. And our thirty seven oh.
burst through the door to the Humanus compound and into the crisp night air. You're not far from your extraction point. Time to go. Keep Max alive. And... Escape the compound. Oh, hello. Smugglers. Extra fuck you. I forgot about you. Run. Damn it. Lori, use Fury Swipe.
Thanks, Maxim. Did none of you have a clear shot? Oh my god. There's, the player character is coming, look busy, and then there's, I'm just going to do stuff because it's in my programming to do stuff, even though I'm not necessarily actually doing anything. Maxim looks up at the sound of your approach. He's surprised to see you, he doesn't show it. Crazy night, huh? Hope this was worth the trouble. Any luck fighting already in there? No money, but there are a few less racists in the world. All in all, I think we can call this one a win. I can live with that. Thank Christ that's over with. You okay, Alexander? The young man looks shell-shocked. Pulls his rifle, clench tight in his trembling hands. I'm... Yeah. Uh, Uncle Dietrich, yeah, I'm okay. But I... Those guys... I, I knew them. One of them was my bunkmate. I killed him. Couldn't be helped. If you hadn't, he'd have killed you. Believe it. We're gonna take you away from here. Back to the Price Bazaar. Get you the help you need. Yeah, okay. Thanks for this, boss. My nephew's safe and I owe you. One other thing. The Dragon Slayer's happy too. We just did a ballsy thing. Protected my family and gave a monster a bloody nose in the process. Glad to hear he approves. He should be. When the Dragon Slayer's pleased, he tends to be generous with his rewards. I can feel the power coursing through me, boss. I don't know what form it'll take yet, but it's there. And soon I'll be, enough to, uh, be able to use it. Don't mean to break this up, but we need to get moving. Kid, you're with us. The rest of you, pile in the other van. You can continue having your moment when we get back to Shotten's Nest. Shotten Nest. Confirmed. The Yulon ride home, uh, home feels especially comforting today. The Berlin chapter of the Humanist Poly Club has suffered a terrible blow, and you're the one who dealt it. Volker Stahl's plan to incite a wave of bloody violence across Berlin has been derailed. It isn't often that a Shadowrunner gets to prevent an atrocity on the job. No, but it tends to be that most Shadowrunners that I know, or at least that I play, uh, tend to want to prevent atrocities, because it's just bad for business. Oh, and, you know, atrocities are a bad thing. But, you know, it's also bad for business. PDA rings in the face of your p fixer, Paul Amsel, appears on the screen. Whisper, I have new information to discuss about the estate. Please come as soon as you can. Samuel? Hello, Grand Man Freuden. What can I do for you? I've uncovered what Humanus is up to. You'll find the details on this datapad. Eyes the plans in the datapad, then nods grimly. This fits with Humanus' established pattern of behavior, or if I can file. According to this datapad, Humanus compounds all over Berlin have received similar shipments. They're planning to deploy the gas tomorrow morning. I have a feeling that the Flux State will have a thing or two to say about that. Stahl has overstepped his bounds. His hubris will be his undoing. Actually, I was his undoing. Volker Stahl is no longer among the living. That? That is excellent news. I'm not ashamed to say that I wish the man dead. He deserved whatever he did to him. A bullet between the... <laughs> a bullet in the cerebral cortex tends to be, you know... And now I'm going to see to it that the rest of his twisted organization suffers in the same way that he did. You mark my words. Within the next few hours, the Humanist Poly Club is going to take a hammering that will make the Night of Rage look like a peace rally. I owe you a great deal, Whisper. We all do. And we'll wire the, your payment to the account number that Amazon provided. Pleasure doing business with you. Right. Should 
shock while in nighter. Deliver the humans donor list. The machine accepts the data upload, and only a few minutes later, a certified cred stick is spat out of the coin slot. The phone's old LCD readout displays the text Freedom, Equality, Information, Shockwell and Writer. Chief, you need something? Any thoughts about the last run you'd like to share? Never been a big fan of polygloves in general, let alone a bunch of swine like Humanus. How an idiot like Stall could attract so many followers beyond me. On the plus side, he's dead now, so that's good. I don't know, boss. If you're open for something more profound, I'd talk to one of the others. Catch you later, Blitz. You really came through for me, boss. You ever need anything from me? Anything at all? Then you call on me. I'll come running. How's Andrew Alexander holding up? He's a good kid, that nephew of mine. Give him some time and he'll shake Stull's programming. Might take a while, but he'll adjust li to life here in the Crow's Bazaar. In the meantime, I find a good home for him. Samuel's agreed to take him in. Is that wise? Samuel's employees have no love for humanists. Most of them don't even like humans. The best thing for the kid will be to learn through immersion. If he stays with Samuel's group, he'll have no choice but to interact with metahumans. Soon enough, he'll learn that they're no different from anyone else. Few, the first few days will be rough, no question, but he'll make it through, and he'll come out the other side a better man for it. He seems like a tough kid. I don't doubt you're right. You're a good woman, boss. On to other things. Remember what I was telling you back before we climbed into the van? Yeah, you said the Dragon Slayer was happy and that he'd given you a reward. That's right. Thanks to... Our let's not mince words, heroic actions back in the swine pit, the dragon slayers seen fit to grant me his favor. And now I know what that means and I can do and what I can do with it. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Gestures to the, at the ground near his feet. This As you watch the spot that Dietrich is pointing at begins to glow, lines of force spread out in a scintillating web and a feeling of raw power suffuses your body. I've just torn open a channel between myself and the dragon slayer. That power that you feel is his power pouring through the aether and into that spot. If you're familiar with the ley lines, it's the same basic concept. I consecrate a patch of the ground, and as long as I stand in that spot, all of my magic gets stronger. Not bad, huh? What about another major shaman? Could someone else benefit from one of these channels too? I don't see why not. Like I said, it's basically a ley line. As long as you're on the Dragon Slayer's good side, I don't see why you couldn't use it. My idol, he isn't stingy with his gifts. Anyway, well, boss, I keep want to keep fiddling with this, learn to properly control it. And I'm sure you've got things to do as well. <sighs> ah, if I could stop yawning. You take care of whatever else needs doing, and by the next run I'll be ready to use this. Sounds good. Take care, Dietrich. You too, boss. Oh, glory! Whisper, a pleasure as always. You need anything from me? Any thoughts about the last run? I have no strong feelings about the run one way or the other. Humanus is, of course, a horrible organization, but then so is every other target we've run against. To say that they deserved it would be redundant. That said, I'll admit that I do enjoy a certain sense of satisfaction thinking about Stahl's head breaking apart, so there's that. How you doing, Glory? Golden as always, Whisper. No problems here. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you were warming up to me. I suppose you might say that. I don't talk to many people, Whisper. It just doesn't seem to be worth the effort. I don't... I don't really feel much anymore. Not since... She caresses the chrome of her forearm with a hand made of articulated steel. This... That's true, why are you still talking to me? 
I suppose because you've shown an interest, and because you haven't let me push you away. I don't want to mislead you, Whisper. I still don't feel anything. Not warmth, the friendship, or even trust. But I can appreciate the effort you're making. It's something new, and it's worthy of exploring. You said that things went bad when you turned 14. I'd like to keep talking about that. No, I'd rather not. Why not? Because I don't see a reason to. Memories are unpleasant, and dredging them up doesn't serve any real purpose. You're wrong about that. The last time we talked, it had an impact on you. That's reason enough to continue. I suppose that's true. Feeling discomfort is better than feeling nothing at all. Alright, here's the deal, Whisper. I'm going to talk, you listen. When I'm done, I'm done. No complaints and no arguments, and we'll see what happens. Deal? Deal. Right. A thousand meters stare creeps back into Glory's eyes. A moment later, she's locked away in her own head again, reliving memories she's long since filed away. So a few days after my 14th birthday, I began to express... magically. Go on, Glory. Anyway, I turned 14. I awakened. I don't even remember how my parents found out about it anymore. I think my dad caught me playing with the tiny city spirit that I coaxed out of a pile of garbage. Something like that. With everything that happened afterward, those days are kind of a blur. What I do remember is my father's response to the revelation with his little girl was a witch. A hex. Beat the living shit out of me with his fists. And then his belt. And then a claw hammer that he grabbed out of his toolbox. All the while, my mother was screaming and flailing at him. She took a couple of licks with the hammer, too. I kind of like this answer, just this one. <laughs> I'd very much like to murder your father. It's a common sentiment, believe me, but I appreciate the thought. So finally, after what felt like an hour, Dad stopped turning me, tuning me up with a hammer. I had broken ribs, busted arm, couldn't see out of my left eye, my entire right side was covered with one giant bruise. I was bleeding all over the place, making a real mess of the carpet. The old bastard spat on me, his bleeding, crying daughter. He spat on me and told me that I was de Tufo's whore, the devil's whore. And then he kicked me out of the house. As I was crawling away, my father told me that if he or, that, that if he or any of his Christ brothers ever saw me again, they'd treat me as the Berlin chapter treats the enemies of God. If you're not familiar with how the Kreuzreiters here in Berlin deal with heretics, it's decidedly less pretty than what my dad and his buddies did to their victims. I got the hint, and the next morning I hitched a ride out to Stuttgart. Go on, Glory. I rounded up in tube again. I figured I'd be safe enough to find the medical attention, maybe to call home. It's not far from Stuttgart, but it has a huge student community that I figured I could blend into. And the university there has, a, uh, there has a decent magic department. My ride dropped me off at the university hospital, and they patched me up pretty good. Had some questions for me about how I got so beaten up, but I lied and told them that I had been mugged, which played nicely into my complete lack of cash, credit, and identification. We're going to fast forward through the next few years. I was a kid on the street. I got by as best as I could, doing whatever I had to. The rest we can leave up to your imagination. Good? Of course, I only need to hear what you're comfortable talking about. Nothing more. Good. Thanks. Your relief. Her jaw relaxes somewhat and the tension drains out of her shoulders. So anyway, I lived on the street for a few years. Got used to being hungry all the time. Got used to getting rained on. Got by. I was painfully aware that I had magical talents, but without any kind of training or guidance, I didn't really know how to use them or develop them. Truth be told, they scared me, so I more or less ignored them. So it just sort of went like that until a few days after my 17th birthday. Then I met Marta and everything changed. Marta was a sweet girl. At first I took her for a street kid, like me. Her clothes were a little ratty and she seemed comfortable with being near me. But she also looked well fed and happy and those two things that I, and those were two things that I hadn't been in years. 
We started hanging out and before I knew what was happening, I was in love. There was a genuine attraction between Marta and me, I think. But I also think that a lot of my affection for her came from the fact that she was the first person in years to give a damn about me. She cared, and I loved her for that. She pauses, looks flustered, her composure cracked. Get going, Glory. She stares at you for a beat, then nods. A few ragged breaths later, she continues. Marta told me about a place where she'd been hanging out. She enjoyed me, and she invited me to join her there. It was called Frustiv, the fireplace. And it was sort of a com commune for dispossessed youth. Turns out that a lot of street kids I'd known over the years had moved there. The way they disappeared, I'd assume they'd been kidnapped or killed, but had gone back to their parents. But they were there. I remember being kind of angry about it, like, how did everybody get the memo about this but me? Marta called me down. She was good at helping me work through my things. And I wound up following her to Fairstiv. To a street kid, it was basically paradise. The owner, a guy named Harrow, had set up this little farm just outside Tübingen in the Schombach Forest. The Schombach is officially a nature park, but not many people go there nowadays. Too much fear of paranormal animals, I guess. Anyway, park or not, it was big and plenty big enough for us to hide in. It was also safe and pretty, and the farm was well stocked with food. Most importantly, Fairstow gave us a sense of community and stability that we never had on the street, and we loved Harrow for that. He became like a surrogate father to us. Lori pauses again, and you recognize the distinctive flush in her cheeks. She seems to have come out of her reverie once again. That's enough for now. I need to process all of this, and I don't want to continue forward until I've had the chance to do that. I know that this all happened years ago, but I guess it's still pretty raw to me. So I'm going to ask to give me I ask you to give me some space for a while. She turns away, and the frost begins to creep back into her voice. We can pick it back up later. Nice talking to you, Glory. Inbox for new messages. Job. Hijacked shipments. Metbot, Gunari. If you value new hardware coming into the Crows Bazaar, we need to talk. One of my weapons shipments was hijacked by a local gang. I can promise 500 new yen, and if you can recover the shipment, I'll have some new gear on the shelf. Come see me for the details. Finishing your services. Held. To Whisper. We would like to arrange a meeting between you and the, one of our representatives. We will find him at the cafe nearby. His name is Luca Deer. He will be expecting you. Come alone. Well, well, well. Post pay data. Let's give me a safe house list. Relevant keywords. Thread. Transis Highlander. Best new deck. Just got one of these from a Transis Neuronet rep. Wants me to sell them in my store, so I took the puppy for a test drive. Signal quality is insane. Makes for a huge difference in comfort slash decking fatigue. I could stay jacked in for hours and feel fine. Last session I had to set a timer so I wouldn't forget to eat. Lumens. Specs in that thing look impressive, but I'm an Allegiance fan. Does the comfort really make that much of a difference? My decks are generally beaters anyway. Wraith like 44. Allegiance? What are you doing with that thing? Playing video games? Any serious decking is going to require way more horsepower than that thing can push, even overclocked. Tolstoy. Only a crapper, crappy decker blames their gear. I do just fine, thanks. Wraith like 44. Response Lumens. How much is Francis paying you to post this shy song here? Maelstrom. <laughs> Thread. Help! Drowning in junk messages! Boy, Chimmers, I can feel you use your help. Every time I jack into the Matrix these days, I'm flooded with junk mail. There's so much of it I can't even see. Can anyone help me? Rolling Thunder. Great, another newbie thinks he's on the tech support board. <laughs> Wraith like 44. <laughs> hey, stuff it. I wouldn't ask, but I'm desperate. I can't deck like this. Rolling Thunder. Alright, Thunder, calm down. Sounds like an aim ad bot is keyed to your, into your deck. Been poking around anywhere sketchy lately? I don't need details, a simple yes or no will do. The smiling bandit. Strikes again, ha ha ha. No bandit, I haven't been anywhere like that. I swear, please help me. Rolling thunder. What you want to bet? And he gave his personal info to some scam site. I'll give you 10 to 1 odds. Wraith like 44. No, I don't think so. All I've done was make an online dating profile. Rolling thunder. Ooh. Let me guess, meet and mate? How did you guess? It's not a real dating site, Thunder. It's a place where desperate people go to get infected with malware. 
But what do I do? How do I make it stop? I don't know. Buy a new deck. Best of luck. <laughs> yeah, when a deck is basically a, you know, a, like a desktop computer, but you can wear it on your back. That's... Yeah, you need to defrag it. <laughs> um, jobs directory. Uh, claim payment for the Manus Data Steel. Payment as promised. Beckenbauer. Second payment should pops into your inbox. Payment details. Payment from client. Twenty-two k five hundred. Deductions for crew salary six thousand. Ammunition and resupply costs fifteen hundred. Automatic deduction for Alice funds eleven point two five k. Remainder sent to Whisper's account three thousand seven hundred and fifty. Payment transfer complete. All right, back. Uh, back away. Ansel. Whisper, welcome back. I have news for you. In your absence, I've been looking into the Harfield Manor. Whatever first showing us up to, it's both large scale and well funded. We've uncovered a money trail leading to, from holding companies all over the world an offshore fund with a dummy address. From there, all of the freshly laundered money flows directly into the Harfield estate. How much money are we talking about here? I can't name an exact figure, but we're talking about a lot of money. In the millions of New Yen, most certainly. Though the Firewing is planning, she has access to all the resources she'll need to carry it out. But first Shiringo was different. She didn't scheme or plot, she acted. Yes, and look where it got her. When the Firewing launched her attack on humanity, it was an act of hubris. She lashed out because she didn't consider our species to be a threat. It would be equally hubris to come for us to assume that she would still make the same mistake twice. I will continue digging into this, and you and your team tackle that in your next run. With luck, I will have more information to share upon your return. Sounds good, Paul. One last thing, Whisper. Malit was able to restore the readable surface of one of Green Winter's DVDs. If you'd like to take a look, you will find it sitting beside the player. Just one of them? She's still working on the others. Many of them are extensively damaged, and getting anything off of them is proving to be quite a chore. She's told me she'll be in touch if, she, uh, if and when she makes any headway. Thanks, Paul. A little bit of Netflix and chill. Load the second DVD. Oh my. Play track one. Green Winters. All right, as I said in my last recording, I've been having trouble finding hard facts on First Winger, so I thought I'd open things up a bit. Let's see what the rumor mill has to say. The screen jumps and Winters reappears in a different location. He's now clutching a mug of soy calf in both hands and there are bags under his eyes. Well, that was enlightening, assuming that any of it was true, that is. So the past five hours, I've been poking around some of the crazier fringe theories related to dragons in the SOX. As a reminder, the SOX is an irradiated wasteland between France and Germany. Got zoned off back in 08 after uh, the Catanon Gal reactor meltdown. Anyway, there are all kinds of rumors floating around that place. I've heard stories about a walled city in there that operates on a survival of the fittest, kill or be killed basis. Sort of like a nightmare inversion of Berlin, all the anarchy but none of the stability that the F state provides. Radiation poisoning, cancer, and mana pollution are just the icing on the cake. So when Adrian helped the Luftwaffe shoot first wing down, she crashed into the SOX. That much is well known. What isn't a well known is are all of the modern day myths that have arisen about her since. And tonight, I've heard an earful. Chatted up a girl who claimed to be a ghost rat. That's a smuggler who operates in the SOX. She told me about a dragon cult called the Disciples of the Cleaning Fire. Apparently these cultists worship some sort of radioactive ghost dragon. It could be fresh winger, or it could be nothing, but it's worth digging into all the same. Another thing that my little ghost rat told me, popular rumor in the SOX is that fresh winger's astral form was, I guess you say, mutated by all of that background radiation? Some of the glow punks out there say, uh, say that she shed her body like an old coat. Others say that she's trapped, doomed to languish as an intangible radioactive ghost. I don't know how much credence I give to any of this. After all, I don't have any proof that my ghost rat is even a ghost rat. She might be, but then she could also just be a run-of-the-mill glowpunk. 
Or maybe she's just yanking my chain and she's never been into the SOX at all. Who knows? Well, it's food for thought anyway. I don't know whether the thought of some radioactive ghost dragon thing is any scarier than a genuine dragon is, but it's interesting all the same. Now the big question is, will any of this get me closer to finding Adrian? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no, but you could never tell. All this talking makes me yawn. Eh. Alright, let's continue thinking outside the box. After the dragon fall, the great uh, dragon Kaltenstein uh, uh, came flying into the SOX to rescue the Firewing. But he was driven off, some say, uh, some say killed, by Loftware and Nibble here. So, what if there's another dragon involved in all this? Grabs a thick leather-bound tome from the shelf behind him, licks a finger, and begins to leaf through it. Alright, so let's run through down through the list of major dragons that could be helping her. First, there's Golden Worm. Uh, there's the Golden Worm, Loftware, the CEO of Seder Krupp, and quite possibly the single most dangerous being on Earth. Loftware's a local boy, so he'd be in a position to help Fischfinger. He certainly has the financial capability to help her. He could send a small army into the SOX if he wanted to. So he's definitely got the means, but I can't see how he would have the motive. He actively prevented the Firewing's rescue back in 2012, after all. Same thing is true for Nibble here, so let's scratch both of them off the list. Forbes of age, frowning. We've got Aiden, the great Surush. He's operating out of Turkey. By all accounts, he's not a fan of Loftware. They're actively competing for territory in the Middle East. So I suppose that could be considered a motive. Reviving the Firewing might cause problems for the Golden Worm. But would he risk a war with Seder Krupp by straying into Loftware's territory? Again, I don't think it's likely. And there's Keldir out in Wales. He's pretty heavily invested in the tran Transys Neuronet, so he's got the money. He's too busy dealing with the BTL killer scandal that Transis is going through out in London to get his claws dirty in the SOX. Flip. Uncle Zan out in the UCAS. Nah, no, this is a waste of time. The more I think about it, the more convinced I am. The Firewing is acting alone. Dragons don't cooperate unless they actually have to. After all, why bother making nice but with your equals when you've got the entire planet full of pawns at your disposal? You don't need to work together. They have us to exploit. Well, this track does load is clearly corrupted. The screen fills with a meaningless stream of text. The file is partially garbled. You can recognize a few words here and there, but they interspersed among amidst a solid block of corrupted text. Eau Claire, it's still my, uh, it's still my big pfft, searchy pfft, fire. Pfft. I'll swear to pfft in the end that I will find you. Pfft. If it's the last. Old guy, not getting any. Swear to new research. Turning up. Don't know. Files corrupted. Screen fills with the meaning of the assortment of ASCII characters. Stream goes black, and all the digital chime that you heard on the Dragonfall DVD. And the same digital chime that you hear on the Dragonfall DVD plays again. The crackle of static fills the air, followed by the same now familiar electronic whine. A few minutes la moments later, the display goes live. Vauclair looks haggard. His eyes are heavily bagged and bloodshot, and his hair is must. He holds a cigarette in an unsteady uh, steady hand. Hermie, it's me. I can't sleep. I don't know where you are. Out having fun, no doubt. Maybe floating with one of those unattainable beauties that you're always chasing. He tries on a smile, but it quickly disappears. He takes a drag on his cigarette. That's good. I want you to live a pleasant, normal life. After all, one of us should. Alright, I can still smell the smoke, Hermie. It's almost a year later and I still I can still taste the stench of burning corpses. I sleep, I can hear the sirens and the screams. There's no sound in this world as horrible as a burn victim's screams. Doctors would call this PTSD, I'm sure. They have me in therapy, they dose me up on SSRIs, they do to our veteran soldiers. <laughs> Write a story for the tabloids. The Great Dragon Slayer, Adrian Vauclair, mentally incapable of wrestling with his own demons. He shakes his head. No, no ther for therapy for me. It's certainly no medication. I have deserved never a reputation to live up to, however poorly deserved it is, and however little I want it. 
pauses, stubs out a cigarette. The dragon's still alive, Hermie. Of that I am certain. One day I will find her, and then perhaps I'll be able to sleep through the night. Bow down the DVD player and step away. Okay, that was a lot that just happened. Um, just gonna put some stuff in my stash. Just, uh, yeah. I'm at the end of my streaming time, but uh, a lot has happened. Um, um, you got to see that uh, you got to see me uh, fuck up my save file completely. <laughs> um, but I uh, guess that's sort of good to know about me going forward. I'm not. I'm not good with living with my consequences when I have a reload button. <laughs> when I have the ability to have my con my actions have no consequence. I I will I will reload. Um, but so this has been uh, Shadowrun, um, Shadowrun Dragonfall. Um, I'm gonna do another episode of this on Wednesday, and then uh, around the same time, 1, 1 1.30 kind of thing, then uh, I'm going to, on Friday, I'm just gonna mess around, probably play like Remnant or Code Vein, or maybe see if I can get one of my, uh, one of my friends on to play, um, but anyway, um, it's been Whisper 219. I still have no idea how to end th these streams. And I uh, hope to see you again when I stream next.